Hi, this is Patrick from SDH. Today we have something really special. We have the Supermicro M11 SDV overview. And this is an overview of the first channel AMD Epic 3000 platform that we've seen. It's been about a year since its launch and we're really excited to see a platform come out. So if you wanna see the decoder ring for the overall SKU stack, the M11 SDV is the platform. The features, which is the last four letters, or LM4F, which means that there are four one gig ethernet uh, and IPMI on this board. And then there's a various CPU and cooling options. There are four main options in terms of SKUs. You have two four core and two eight core options, which are all of the single die AMD Epic 3000 CPUs. Then you also have a active version of the AMD Epic 3251. And that's why you get a plus. Plus there means active. So now let's go look at the overview of the board. It's a MITx. 6.7 inch by 6.7 inch form factor. You can also see that we have passively cooled with a pretty large passive cooling heat sink for the AMD Epic 3000 processors. We don't actually have the active version, but we have four passive versions in the lab. The passive cooling here does mean that you need chassis airflow to keep the chips cool, although they really don't run that hot. The next feature that we wanted to draw your attention to is the PCIe Gen 3 by 16 slot. Now this by 16 slot could be used for something like a GPU, could be used for something like a 100 gig ethernet card because it has 16 lanes. This slot can also bifurcate into two by eight lane sets, or it can use four four lane PCI Gen 3 sets. So for example, if you wanted to have a riser card that allowed you to have four NVMe drives on it, you could do that with this. And we've actually tested it and it works even in our early retail samples. There's also a M2 2280. That 2280 means it's not large enough to accept some of the larger M.2 drives like the 22110, the 110 millimeter drives. We put a Intel Optane 380 gig drive just to show you that. As with any good embedded product, there's legacy IO such as front panel headers, COM headers, USB 2 headers. There's also four SATA ports and the gold port we wanted to show real quick you use for a SATA DOM which is great in embedded devices. You don't need a power cable. You can just install the DOM in and you don't even need to put any other wires for your embedded product. So it's a pretty handy feature to have. We also wanted to point out this little connector. This little connector is actually a power connector. So if you have drives that you need to power and you're using a DC power supply, you can use that header and some cables to get power for your SATA devices such as your SSDs and hard drives. So it's kind of a cool feature. It's not something we've really seen before from Supermicro, but certainly an interesting feature of the board. So let's reposition this real quick. You can see that there are four DDR4 slots. These four DDR4 slots take DDR4 RDIMS. They can take up to 128 gig RDIMS, which means that you get 512 gigs of DDR4 RAM maximum, which is the same actually as the Intel Xeon D2100 series. The last thing to look at is the fact that this board has a DC input power. It doesn't have a standard ATX20 or 24 pin connector. This is something that Supermicro started doing a few years ago and it replaces a very large connector on the motherboard. And since a lot of these are embedded devices, it makes sense to go directly to DC power in a lot of applications. Flipping over to the rear IO, you can see on the left side that there's a standard IPMI management port. There's also two USB 3.0 ports. On the right side, you'll see a VGA port. And then in the middle, what you're gonna see is a block of four one gig ethernet ports. And those are controlled by the Intel i350 controller, which is under that little heatsink. The Intel i350 is a very high-end controller for one gig standards. It supports SRIOV and all of those great features. So we really like that inclusion. We were kind of bummed to see that they don't have 10 gig ethernet, which comes from the AMD Epic 3000 SSC in this version, but hopefully we'll get that in future versions. The benefit is that this board is very well supported in most OSs. Hopefully you liked what you saw. So if you did, you can go check out the SDH main site where we're gonna have a lot more reviews on the M11 SDV platform. You can also check more from STH on our YouTube channel and subscribe to see what else we have in store because we have some really cool stuff coming up.